Okay, um, so I'd like to thank, uh, thank the organisers and Darius in particular for uh, inviting uh, us here today to, to speak. Uh, this is a fantastic conference. Uh, it's been really well organised and been a really great uh, experience <coughs> um, for the speakers. Um, and uh, of course, it's an important topic. It's a, it's a, it, you know, it's a big topic because, um, you, you know, creativity, innovation, how do we bring it out? It's all changing, it's, it's, it's moving around. Um, and it, there's a lot of big players in the game. Uh, you know, there's your Googles and your YouTubes and your Facebooks and all the rest of them. But then there's also the ordinary consumer. And uh, that, that's who we hope that we speak up for a little bit in this whole, uh, in this whole world and this time of, um, on, on this time of change. Uh, we're a group of lawyers and technologists. Um, uh, as, uh, as has been said, we're, we're, we're very much a voluntary group. We're a very small group. We're just uh, funded out of small donations here and there. Um, to give you an idea of the kind of work that we do, um, how does that go? That's the one we want. Um, th this is just a snapshot from our, our website. So in terms of uh, uh, big topics there, digital privacy is an issue we've been heavily involved with. Uh, the, the work we've done here is, in, the biggest work we've done here is in relation to something called data retention. So data retention is the idea that the telephone company keeps all the records of all the telephone calls you've made and the place where you made all those telephone calls from, it keeps those records uh, on behalf <coughs> of the government. The government has asked them to do so and it keeps them for two years and it keeps them just because, just because it can. It doesn't have any particular reason. It's not because you're connected to any particular crime or, or that anything bad has happened. It's just keeping it as a matter of course. We say this is, the, the, this is wrong. This is, it's not right. To, it's immense to surveillance. Uh, and it's, and that it, uh, there should be a, uh, that it, this isn't lawful. It's not a reasonable thing to do. So we've challenged that in the Irish courts and then in the European courts and we've recently had an opinion from the European Court of Justice in relation to this, and we hope to have a judgment, a positive judgment, um, later this uh, later this year. Uh, web blocking, web blocking, uh, uh, web blocking is an issue that also relates very much to the issues around intellectual property and free expression. It's the question of when should a website be blocked. You know, is it, you know, that it's quite apart from the issue of sometimes people violate copyright, sometimes people violate various laws online, but what's the right way to go and deal with that? And we would say that web blocking, where basically the ISPs in Ireland or in the UK or whatever country are asked to block certain websites or certain IP addresses, that that's not a good way to go about policing the internet. It's not good for consumers because of all the side effects that it has. You know, it, it may block things, that, it, it may have inadvertent effects, um, you know, that it may block content that's perfectly legitimate. Um, it, it, it may not really be effective. It may give us a false sense of security because these blocks can always be, be, uh, be gotten around. Um, and there's uh, copyright reform is a topic that we've become involved with uh, in, in the last couple of years as, as, uh, as change comes in. Um, the big work that we've done on, uh, on, on copyright is in relation to the Copyright, uh, copyright Review Committee, and I'll talk to you a bit more about that. Um, this is the, the committee that uh, Dr. O'Dell has chaired. Uh, we have m made our effort to, to make a submission um, on behalf of people who, in a way, aren't represented in the, in the, in the, in the, in the copyright system. They're, they're, not people in, they're not people taking revenue out of it, they're just regular users, regular customers. Other work we've done in this is in terms of court cases. Uh, as I said about website blocking, it's an issue that comes up with intellectual property and in relation to, in particular, the blocking of uh, file sharing websites. So uh, last year, uh, new, le new uh, secondary legislation was brought in to make it easier for record labels to um, have websites blocked, uh, for example, the Pirate Bay websites in particular. Um, we, uh, we went to court on this issue. We asked to be appointed a, an amicus or a friend of the court. And the reason why we went about this was because um, we felt that the interests of ordinary users weren't being represented. So the content companies were there, you know, the record labels and Universal and EMI and so on. The ISPs were there, the Aircoms and the UPCs, but nobody was there to represent the needs of the ordinary person. Um, 
there, there was a long debate about this and their long judgment, but in the heel of the hunt, our application wasn't successful. And that's the reality of the work we do. Whenever you go to court, sometimes you end up with one of these. Um, we end up with a bill for about 26,000 euros. Uh, which we later got knocked down to about 15,000 euros, but that's that, that's part of what we do, and we we think it was worthwhile. Uh, it, it was worthwhile to take to take the action and bring the issue to the attention of the court. Um, this issue is very much copyright for uh, you know most of the people involved in the field. It's all about slicing up the revenue. It's about slicing up slicing up money. There's a, tr a traditional way that the content industries have worked in terms of the different people in the chain get a different amounts. The artist gets a certain amount of money, the record label or the production company gets another amount of money, the retailer gets a certain amount of money, the guy who makes the plastic box gets a certain amount of money, and so on. And that's what a lot of the concerns that, that all the lobbyists have is how is the money going to divide down? Because the internet has changed everything. You know, all the old rules have gone out the window. There, isn't, there are no retailers anymore. There are no plastic discs. There's no manufacturing. There's no people driving around the country in vans. Um, but on the other hand, it's very easy for, for customers to, um, to make their own copies. So, but, so for, for them, they're obviously concerned about how the money splits up. But we hope that we've got to, we're trying to take a different view. We're looking at what this all means to people, to regular people, the consumers, the people who, the people who, uh, who consume media, and also, as it happens, the people who pay for the whole rigmarole. They're the people who pay um, either directly or indirectly uh, for, um, for, for intellectual property products and what are their interests. And to understand how big the change, uh, to understand how big the change has, has been that happened, it's worth looking at the technology and just the sheer level of change uh, that's happened in, uh, over the last even 50, 50 years. If you look at the technology of, of music reproduction, but the same is true about book reproduction or film reproduction or anything else, this was the sort of equipment you used to need to reproduce records. You know, you needed a nice gramophone, first of all, which was a, a beautiful instrument, but highly expensive, highly complex, um, lots of parts um, and uh, difficult to maintain and so on. If you wanted to actually produce your own records, you needed this sort of gear. So you need this big machine for actually pressing the records, and you need another machine for making the master discs, and you need another machine for heating the plastic and baking the plastic. You needed all this gear. It was millions of euros of equipment in order to make a copy, in order to um, to, in order to distribute this stuff. And then that's quite apart from all the challenges of actually distributing it, that you know, if you bring out a record, how do you know if it's going to be a hit or not? Because if you, you, you have to make a guess in advance because uh, you need to make enough records. If it's going to be a hit, you have to have enough records in the shop to, to satisfy the demand. So uh, you know, that made the industry work a particular way. Um, but now all of that has changed. You know, it's really different to what it, what it um, what, what, to what it was before, that basically this is all you need now to distribute music, to make a copy of music, to send some music to your friends. The, co the cost of copying, the pain of copying has, has just been massively reduced. So Cory Doctorow, the, the, the writer, is, is fond of saying that today is the hardest day it will ever be to make a copy, to make a copy of a, of a creative work. Every day from today, it will get easier. And it's already pretty easy. So it's going to get an awful lot easier. And th even this, this is only one part of the picture in a way. Um, that, 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 this is just the distribution. There's also the, the production. You know, the production has also been democratized. Because this device, the phone or the iPad or whatever, is also a mixing device. You know, it's a mixing device. It's a recording device. You can make your own music. You don't need a big studio. You don't need all that stuff anymore. You don't need loads of engineers. It's been taken in the hand, into the hands of the ordinary user. Now, there's one proviso with this. You still need talent. You know, it, does, it doesn't work on t unless somebody somewhere has some talent. Um, uh, you know, p people still want good stuff. They just—they don't just want loads of loads of bad stuff. They want some really good stuff, and that's important to remember in all this. And remember, the artist that is at the heart. But it's still true that the whole thing has been turned around. It's been democratized. The, if you take this guy here, there's a guy at a gig. 
but he's not just at the gig attending the gig, he's also a guy, he's making his own recording, he's making his own little piece of, of, of media from his point of view. He'll go home, he might keep it at home, he might upload it onto YouTube, he might put it up on the, on the BitTorrents, uh, who knows what he'll do it. it but he's very, much, uh, he's very much in control of media now. He, he's the author of his own destiny, he no longer takes what, he, what he's getting. So in terms of what, what this user expects, we think these are the, the, these are what these, the customer wants, the end customer wants. Uh, one is that they want free expression. You know, free expression free, um, means things like being able to link. You know, that be, they, the customers expect that they're going to be able to link to content they like. We assume that's something that's, that's a straightforward thing, but it, it's not so much. They expect their producers to be, to be unfettered. They, ex they want good quality material. They want penalties enforcement because now they're on the other side. They're also producers. They may take a photograph. They may want to enforce <laughs> their rights to get paid for, paid for it. Um, they want to be able to pay for content. You know, they, they want, to, be, they, 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 they want to, to have a way to pay. They want to be able to license some content if they want to do something with it. Um, and they, they, they want it to be, and they expect it to be consumer oriented because they're paying for this whole thing. So in the light of that, these are the submissions we, we specifically made to the CRC um, about, about copyright. Um, it, it, something that uh, Dr. Odell has talked about already is in relation to freedom of speech. There are fundamental things about freedom of speech that, that you would think that are just straightforward in law, but they're not. So, for example, the right to make a pastiche, you would think that that was, that was allowed, but it actually isn't allowed in, in Irish law in many circumstances. Um, similarly, linking. It's not quite clear when you link, is that okay? Whistleblowing. If you have a copyright document, can someone stop you from, from publishing that document on the basis of copyright? Common sense says no, but the law could possibly be interpreted to mean something different. Could copyright law be used to suppress free speech? You know, just through a spurious claim, that's an issue as well. Fair dealing and fair use. Fair use. Customers expect to be, we think customers should be allowed to link. Um, you know, linking to other content, that should be, that should be okay. It should be okay to quote, con uh, quote uh, in the context of a, of a, larger, of a larger work. Um, uh, there should be reasonable copying. You should be allowed to make a copy of a CD you've bought on, for your MP3. Everyone assumes you can. You can't. Legally speaking, you can't. And it should be consumer-oriented. Um, to, 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 it, 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 you know, it should be a, a consumer-oriented system rather than just a system that's, um, uh, you know, the, the consumer should be at the heart of it. Um, and, and that's, we believe that we've succeeded to a large extent and that the work that Dr. Dell has done has, has taken on board a lot of these, uh, a lot of these concerns. So, to just to kind of sum up on the whole thing, um, the, 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 we'd like to just say that we think that copyright really matters. It's it's not it's a, it's a it's a tough issue. It's a ver, it's a very complicated issue. There are lots of niches to it. There are a lot of new, nuances. But it's really important because it matters to ordinary people. It's not just about the commercial issues. It's about artistic expression and the way that artistic expression is funded. Um, in terms of, uh, and that's, that's why, you know, it's, it, we're, I'm so glad to see so many people here, to see the work the Creative Commons are doing and see all the other work uh, in, the, in the area. In terms of what happens next, um, we believe in our organisation that the main things we need to be doing are to support the paper from the Copyright Review Commission. It is a fantastic piece of work. It's, it's a very long and complex and sophisticated, nuanced piece of work. It's very well argued. It's been very impressive to see um, Owen O'Dell and his colleagues on the committee, which is quite a diverse committee, um, t taking the time to, to answer questions about this and to, to explain the arguments and so on. And there's been a good balance in the paper. We're going to keep the advocacy going. We're go you know, to keep, uh, keep the message about free speech, um, the, the importance of privacy, the, the, to keep the, this message in the media. Uh, through in the media before the Oireachtas and so on. And we're also looking at the broader range, the European level, because a lot of these issues are now decided at the European level. And uh, it, that's right, because Europe is the bigger, our bigger commercial context. And Ireland has the opportunity in that context to be a leader, to be, a, to be the place with the clear laws, the place, uh, the place where you can depend upon. 
So this is what we're asking our, our customers, our uh, supporters to do. We're asking them to lobby their MEP, the, the, the MEP and their MEP candidates in particular in this year, because as we say, this is a European issue. It's, it's, it's not just an Irish issue, um, and it's an issue that, that will come before the Parliament again. We're asking people to respond to the EU consultation that's currently underway. So it's, like all these consultations, it's large and complicated. But there's a simple guide to the consultation at this web address, ucan.fixcopyright.eu. And that comes from the um, EDRI, which is an umbrella group of digital rights groups uh, in the European Union, which we're a member of. Um, and also to consider making a, to making a donation um, for, for our work. All the money goes to a good cause. So that's really all I have to say. Uh, all there is, is to say is to give you the credits. These are all the image credits. Um, they're all Creative Commons licensed, mostly from Flickr, I think. And, uh, and thank you very much.